section 2.1 of the CSA Plus, right? Starting our uh, second module, we're going to be more focused on vulnerability management, right? And starting this off on uh, really the, the first step necessary business practices, uh, trying to figure out what requirements you actually have when it comes to vulnerability management. Uh, now, requirements for how you actually, uh, well, try to address vulnerabilities or how you try to have certain security controls set up is going to vary greatly from one uh, corporate environment to another. Now, uh, talking about the corporate security policy, right, is going to be the, the first factor, at least the most direct. Right? Uh, especially when you're talking about employees that aren't management and someone who's just setting up the network. Uh, really, all they're going to do is they're going to get a security policy and it's going to say, hey, follow this. It's good to go, right? Management already has it set. But this security policy is generally just going to be a general outline of uh, risks that uh, the company is trying to address. It's going to be guidelines on how to actually set everything up so that you know what you're actually going to be trying to tackle that risk with and who is responsible for what within a company, which helps in a, a very of way uh, where, again, you can see if something occurs, you know who to contact or who is in charge of what, right, in a nice organized manner. Um, and on that note, right, you should make sure that your security policy stays up to date. Uh, so you need to know who is always in charge, right, if um, some head of a department involved uh, suddenly retires or uh, gets a promotion, you want to make sure that that's updated accordingly. Now, uh, additionally to actually providing all these outlines, it does have an added benefit for the corporation to actually prove that the corporation is attempting to cover up any vulnerabilities, right, that they're actually performing due diligence, uh, because it is possible if an incident was to occur uh, and then they come under legal investigation. If it's discovered that a corporation was careless with people's personal information, uh, there can be quite a severe legal downfall on that company, right? And the, the corporation does not want to actually end up in that uh, scenario, right? It'll cost them less time and money really just to create a security policy which they, well, should be following, right? Uh, Two of the most important factors that you'll see here uh, is what are the goals of the security policy, right? What do they plan on accomplish and who is responsible, right? There needs to be very easily laid out simply who uh, must do what, right? If that's not outlined, it's going to be very hard to actually enforce any of these security controls uh, because someone might not know who's in charge of what aspect, uh, and they might not know exactly what they're really attempting to do. Um, and again, you do want a level of detail there. Uh, you don't want to say, ah, we're trying to reduce vulnerability in XYZ servers. Well, yes, of course you're trying to reduce vulnerabilities in certain servers, right? You need to specify, right, how and what and uh, all the different information going in there. Now, um, additionally, some, some factors you could see, some security policy or some of the content you could see uh, could be mentioning different uh, you know, departments, mentoring what they're doing, right? It's not necessarily just an individual uh, that is in charge, right? So you could have a security policy uh, mentioning how HR is going to undertake training and how to ensure that uh, HR is going to actually well, ensure that compliance uh, is being followed when employees leave or enter the company, right? You want to make sure that a proper, uh, really, procedure is followed so that, well, on a very simple level, a company doesn't get sued, right? Uh, people have certain rights and rather there's laws protecting people when it comes to how uh, a uh, someone is going to be let go from a company and what the requirements are, and HR needs to be trained on all of those uh, laws and how the company is, well, creating procedures based off of them, right? And that would be outlined there. Uh, additionally, you might see how a security policy outlining, you know, how data is allowed to travel through the network, right? What parts of the network can communicate with other parts of the network, right? Are, again, 
uh, who's able to access the data, how they're able to access the data, right? Generally, what the data is, not the contents, but a description, so you know what you're trying to protect. Uh, you might get another security policy that's outlining kind of a basic disaster recovery uh, so that, you know, there's those general details of what the goal is for your actual, you know, disaster recovery plan, right? But in general, those are going to be, you know, parts of the security policy. Um, it should be noted that it is possible that your security policy is going to contain sensitive information. Right? When you're talking about that security policy outlining, you know, what data is allowed to go where, uh, a few things can come up as issues. Uh, for one, any details on that data that have been given, if an attacker has been able to compromise that, uh, they now have that information on the data. And they also might get a slight picture on how information uh, flows throughout the network. Or, uh, additionally, Right, you, you don't need every employee to know exactly all the details of you know, your DRP, your da uh, disaster recovery plan. Right? You only want them to know what they need to know. Right? Because otherwise, again, if someone's trying to, uh, say, breach the company and they have insider knowledge, so they have access to that DRP and they know, oh, in case these servers get shut down, they're going to transfer the load to these other servers. And in that scenario, right, they might be able to kind of prepare their attack for that exact scenario. Maybe they figure out that the backup isn't as secure and that generally is how it's going to go, right? Most of the money is going to be spent on the active servers that are going to be active, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time and not on the uh, backups. Now, additionally, there's going to be other things pushing really how you know, policy is going to be shaped and what security controls need to be uh, put into place. So one very simple is going to be what laws exist in the country, the nation that uh, the company operates in. And that can also add some difficulties in uh, international comp companies and where data is allowed to flow, right? Uh, generally, talking about healthcare, it's... Uh, not something that you're going to see crossing international lines very frequently. It's a lot of personal information. But uh, regardless, uh, still every company is going to have uh, a situation in a country, regardless of the country, and that each country is, say, uh, focusing on health care. For ex uh, example, every country is going to have their own laws and regulations uh, regarding the health care industry. And then additionally, right, even if there's one country, uh, even if I'm US-based, there's going to be, well, regulations based off of what industry I'm in, right? So all of these sorts of regulations you need to make sure that I'm, that I'm following. I need to make sure that everything that I do is going to be up to par so that if I, there's ever an inspection, inspection or if something's ever determined to be uh, wrong, and now there's a legal uh, investigation, I don't want to be found to be a company that hasn't been following all of the proper procedures in order to make sure that I am compliant with all of my local laws and regulations. Uh, so one uh, such arbitrary example could be the Computer Security Act 1987. Uh, here, right, again, this is a, a national law looking at uh, US. Uh, it's gonna say that federal agencies um, or that are developing their security policies, uh, what they have to do, and right, it's going to outline the process or how uh, confidential information uh, is processed, right? Again, th there's obviously more detail on the, in the exact act, but right, that's the basic. It's just how that information is processed. But again, that's just one example, and every nation has their own laws that they have in place determining what has to do what, right? This just one scenario is saying, hey, uh, yeah, you've got uh, confidential information, right? Uh, you need to have a security policy for that confidential information in place, and it's going to follow a specific template that they outline. Uh, then additionally, even just the industry that you're in is going to vary, right? 
Uh, different industries are going to have different uh, problems or different regulations that they're going to have to follow, make sure that they stay compliant with in order to make sure everything's up to par, secure. And again, you don't want to be the company, even though there's, there's technically nothing forcing a company to be compliant, uh, the, unless they're, you know, again, they're getting audited or again, they don't want to fall into that scenario where there's a breach and they're found not to have been compliant with regulations for that company, right? There's going to be severe fines, uh, if not worse, uh, well, actually uh, levied on that company, right? This is something you can see uh, semi-frequently, sadly, uh, where a lot of heads of companies, you know, banks especially, they're found to be doing something they shouldn't be doing, right? And then there's large fines or jail time involved. Uh, but uh, one example is PCI DSS, uh, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, uh, which simply enforces a certain level of data security when you're processing credit card payments. Right? Again, uh, any any company that's dealing with right, processing credit card payments needs to make sure they follow this industry regulation. It doesn't affect everyone. Right? Just as healthcare regulations aren't going to affect everyone. But it's, ever, it's something that if your company is dealing with a certain industry, it needs to make sure that they follow uh, certain regulations, right? If your company is dealing with volatile or potentially hazardous chemicals, right, there is legal constraints that are put into place specifically for those chemicals, right? Uh, even simple things like, hey, make sure that there's guides, you know, the material safety data sheet is in place. Uh, so everyone knows what they're working with and make sure blank or, you know, X, Y, Z uh, safety equipment is provided. Anything along those lines, right? But that's all going to be, you know, outlined depending on what, uh, again, what industry you're in, what uh, nation you're in, right? And a company, again, assuming that they're trying to remain compliant, which they should, should periodically test their security policies uh, as it's being developed uh, to make sure that it's working out how they want it to and it's getting all the proper controls and then also after implementation, right, in order to make sure that everything is staying compliant, right? I can't just launch my company, train my starting employees uh, and call it a day. I need continuous awareness training. I need to make sure that everything is staying up to date. I need to make sure my employees are following my security policy and proving that I'm ensuring that people are following the policy. Right? I need to do everything to cover my company's back uh, to make sure that there aren't, again, legal ramifications. Uh, it's, you don't want to, even just as an individual employee, uh, if your job is to make sure some other department is uh, following something, right? Um, if that's your job and then that department is found, hey, yeah, even though you signed off saying that they've made compliance, all the proper scans, have been run, now there's an issue that could have been mitigated, well, that's gonna fall on you now, right? Now all that uh, downfall, that possible legal ramification is gonna fall on you, right? Which is obviously less than ideal. Uh, depending on what it is that you're trying to actually uh, secure, uh, there are plenty of frameworks that exist, again, depending on country, depending on what regulatory environment you're on, right? What industry you're working on, uh, then, these frameworks exist to give, say, a checklist of dif different items that should be in place, right? Different controls that you should be in use, right? In order to maintain compliance, right? So again, for example, just having to say uh, security up to a certain point uh, on systems dealing with certain types of data. Uh, a very simple example could be, say, the encryption of PII right, if it's found that you're keeping social security numbers in an easily accessible format, there could be a uh, issue. Or it could be talking about uh, having, say, an IDS or a vulnerability scanner in place, right? And then there are also certain uh, vulnerability scanners or uh, IDSs that can have these compliance templates installed where essentially they are looking specifically to scan against a regulatory environment, right? Which can be beneficial, right? You've got a decent level of automated scan where essentially as long as you can prove that this scan is running without a hitch and you have all the proper paper trail uh, from point A to point B, 
then you can make sure that you are staying compliant, right, with whatever regulatory uh, body that you are involved in.